Hey everybody, we are back. Um, we're going to try and cut through some of this long-term memory review. Um, I want you to kind of pay special attention to some of these terms as you see them or hear them come up in your notes. Um, LTP, the ever uh, never-ending search for the physical trace of memory. Uh, LTP may be the beginning of that answer. Um, when we're looking for the n-gram, um, the actual physical trace of memory. Uh, serotonin and glutamate, uh, those are neurotransmitters that influence laying down new memories. And drugs that may affect memories, uh, some experimental drugs such as uh, propranolol, which may limit one's ability to lay down memories. So as we come across these terms, uh, you want to keep an ear out uh, for those terms and stop the video and make sure we, we write those down. Now, in class today, we spoke about some of the research on the physical storage of memory, if you remember. Where might those memories be located? And here in this maze, it says, uh, you are here, uh, which is kind of funny. But we talked about Gerard and the hamsters um, still being able to remember to run the maze after their brain had stopped electrical current. And Lashley, who cut out tiny pieces, lesioned parts of the, rat, uh, of the rat's cortex, and could still run most of the maze. And how Penfield studies... Um, where he awakened people's memories during brain surgery may not be um, all it was cracked up to be. And Loftus' study on the use it or lose it principle. So we basically ended up here talking about long-term memory um, in the LTP area. And we had some good questions today about this LTP um, situation. So we're, we're going to focus on this this memory trace, and we're going to focus on the actual synapses, um, the tiny little spaces between um, the sending neuron here and the receiving neuron um, just past that synapse, which is right here, the receiving neuron. And um, as we, we look at that area, um, researchers seem to think it's an important point for LTP or uh, neural changes to take place for memories to get laid down. Now, what researchers have shown is that the neural connection between the sending neuron um, and the receiving neuron right in this area here uh, is strengthened with repeated use. Um, so repeated use of a neural pathway um, or a more rapid use. So um, if we rapidly stimulate um, some neural connections that we seem to get this um, strengthening of a response between those two neurons. Now the, the famous study that's in all the books is from Kendall and Schwartz and, and they studied this sea snail called the aplysia, and the aplysia is really good to study in this case because they have only about 20,000 neurons in their, their, their brain, but they are large neurons, and so they're kind of easier to see um, the action taking place between those. And when they're conditioning the sea snail, to, um, they're using seawater and electric shock to flex their gills. When they repeatedly do that, they, they see that um, in, this, in this area here, there's an increased amount of serotonin released at, at certain synapses. And those, those synapses that have an increased level of serotonin with repeated stimulation seem to, the, the sending neuron needs less prompting and the receiving neuron has more uh, receptor sites 
for those neurotransmitters, which means that that neural signal is more likely to get sent across that tiny synaptic gap. So let's see what happens if we actually look at an actual change in one of those applied neural connections. So remember we're talking about LTP, long-term potentiation, and I always saw that as the, the potential for a receiving neuron to fire that next message um, becomes re more reliable long-term. But by definition, it's the strengthening of a potential neural firing with increased activity over time or uh, with rapidity, um, more rapidness. And it, it increases the sensitivity for, for minutes, hours, even longer. And it's, it's easy for me to see on the computer, but it's a little bit harder for me to see on the screen. But um, we're going to see the sending neuron is down here. And that neural signal is traveling this way. And the receiving neuron is here. And we notice that it has, in this case, we have one synaptic connection. I know that hopefully you guys can see that a little bit. Um, after repetitive stimulation, if we go to this picture, which is later, we see more neural connections in that uh, receiving neuron. So that, that sending neuron, um, the message is more likely to get received from the receptor neuron, and it's more likely that that, that message is going to get across the synapse. So um, certainly environmental factors can promote formation of new synapses, and that's what we saw in the study in the aplasia and it actually alters the functioning of the existing synapses. So is this the memory trace that with repeated stimulation, if you're, you're playing the guitar or the piano, you play a sport, um, you study um, certain equations in mathematics with repetition, does it get easier to access that information? Um, most of us would say, hmm, uh, if we're scratching our head, geez, I don't know, but yeah, yeah, probably does. Um, I get better at something with repetition. So uh, there, there seems to be uh, some expectation that this is going to happen, and research on LTP might be the answer to that, that question. So um, does repetition make better? Uh, I don't know if it makes it perfect, but it probably does make it better. And that's where the spacing effect would come in, right? Repeated stimulation over time makes information uh, more accessible. So does LTP uh, kind of explain why that happens? Um, maybe, right? Maybe it does. So... Uh, some other evidence for this, well, what if we say, well, I can see more neural, neural connections after repeated stimulation, but is there any evidence that refutes this? Remember, we're intelligent. We want to um, not just look for information that confirms. So um, there, a study of Lynch, 1992, um, we, we know there are some things. We know that rats can be trained to solve simple tasks, right? So um, in this diagram, if uh, a mouse or a rat is placed in a pool of water, so this is, we've got a pool of water here, um, and the water's murky, that rat's going to swim around that um, pool of water and look for an escape route. Well, actually, right here, there's a little hidden plastic platform that's clear right under the surface of the water. So it doesn't take the rat long to locate that platform. And when placed in that pool again, the rat more quickly finds the, the platform, probably because of visual aids somewhere on here on the perimeter. So that rat 
uh, on subsequent times being placed in there, quickly finds that platform. Boom, drop the rat in, right to the platform, okay? Um, that rat then um, has probably been demonstrating LTP for at least finding that platform in that pool. But what happens if part of the rat's brain, the hippocampus, is damaged? And the hippocampus is part of the brain um, in which uh, memories, new memories seem to be uh, formed early. Um, and it seems to be kind of the, that bridge between the short-term and the long-term memory. So what if we, we damaged it? Um, well, the, the, the rat can't learn then. It might find that platform on an occasion, but on subsequent occasions, the third, fourth, and fifth time, it doesn't show any increased speed in finding that, um, that platform. So it doesn't really learn it, okay? Um, and it seems like the neurons in the hippocampus are needed for that. So if we kind of look at our picture over here, if this is the front of the brain, let me try to mark it here. This is the front, and this is the rear of the brain. Um, we've got the hippocampus kind of in two places. It's this kind of loop system here on one side, on the left hemisphere, and then, of course, it's on the right hemisphere as well. It's lateralized, so there's two halves. And right on the end of those hippo, the hippocampus on each side is something called the amygdala. And the amygdala is important for emotions, uh, especially anger and fear. So um, one thing that's interesting, that the hippocampus um, grows new neural cells throughout the life of a person. Um, unlike other brain cells, the hippocampus seems to generate new um, neurons. So um, certainly with LTP, remember that there's an increasing sensitivity because of presynaptic stimulation, and it kind of increases the postsynaptic output. I think we kind of saw that uh, in the previous um, slide here. We see there's more receptors here. And we see that there's a larger response here on the, um, after LTP has taken place. So uh, maybe we found that um, maybe we found that uh, physical pathway, that physical proof that uh, a memory trace can happen. Um, we'll talk about in the next short video. We'll talk about what happens when stress, what does stress do to memories, and um, kind of finish up with long-term memory. So thanks for watching, and we'll be back uh, in a little bit.